Hi everyone, in this video I am going to show you the correct ways to add the barrier token to an HTTP client request. I will show you how to do that manually, if you need it just for one single request, and also how to automatically set the token for every request, which is usually the case, using the delegating handler. For this video I have prepared two applications, the consumer app and the web API. And as you will see, the API uses just a simple implementation. As you can see inside the auth controller, I authenticate the user and return the token to the client, which then can be used inside the HTTP client's request to authorize the user and fetch the results from the user's controller. You can see both actions have the authorize attribute, which means I have to provide the token inside the HTTP request to be able to access these resources. Now, that you have seen the web API implementation, I want to show you one more thing in the client app. If you take a look inside the service manager class, you can see I have already registered a typed HTTP client using the HTTP client factory. And I am using this login repository to send the authentication request to the API and get the token back. Of course, if you are not familiar with how to use HTTP client factory to create a typed HTTP client, you can always watch my video on that topic. The link is in the description below. There you will learn about many advantages of using the HTTP client factory and how to create both named and typed clients. Now, with this out of the way, let's learn two different ways to add a bearer token to an HTTP client request. The first method we can use to add the bearer token to an HTTP request is to add a header manually to our HTTP client. So, let's open the iUser API repository interface and add a single member inside. I need a method to return a task of i enumerable of user model and let's name it get users async and provide a single token parameter. Now, I need a class to implement this interface. So let's open the user API repository class and let's implement the previous interface. You can also see that I already have prepared my client and serializer options. And again, if you need more info about all of this, I strongly recommend watching the previous mentioned video. Now I will make the method async and to set the token inside the request, I will use the HTTP client field and call the default request headers property and then the authorization property which gets or sets the value of the authorization header for the HTTP request. To populate the header, I have to instantiate the authentication header value class and let's just remove this and use it inside the namespace and provide the bearer as the first argument for the scheme and the token as the second one. This will populate the authorization header with the bearer scheme having the value of our token. Then I can get the result by calling the await HTTP client async method and provide the API endpoint as an argument. I also have to ensure that I get a success status code. If that's the case, I can get a response from my result by calling the await result.content dot read as string async method. Finally, I need to return a deserialized result. For that, let's call the JSON serializer dot deserialize method with i enumerable of user model as a type parameter and provide a response and the options as the arguments. So you can see how easily we can add our authorization header to the request. But I need to register this client inside the service manager class. So this is the same code as you already see above, just this time I registered another typed client. Now if you check the program class, you can see that as soon as I start the app, it will sign in the user and call the run async method right after. So if you inspect the sign in method, we can see that I simply create a new user call the authenticate async method from the login repository client and store the token inside the cache service. But let's implement this other method. Here 
I will call the print users method, which simply prints all the returned users. And let's await the user repository dot get users async method, where I will pass the token. So by using our newly registered user repository client, I will apply the token inside the authorization header and use it to fetch all the users. That said, let's run both apps. And you can see all the users from the protected resource printed here. Awesome! Now that you know how to manually do this for each request, let's see how we can use the delegating handler to automatically apply the token to each request. By using a delegating handler, we can intercept the request and insert the bearer token. To see this in practice, let's create a new class and name it login handler. This class must inherit from the delegating handler abstract class, but I also have to override a single send async method and add both the async and await keywords. This method is responsible for intercepting every HTTP request and making some modifications to it. So let's call the request dot headers dot authorization property and populate it with a new authentication header value instance. And again, let's remove this and use a namespace. And then provide the bearer for the scheme and our token from the cache service. With this base send async method, we just resume the HTTP request flow. Now, I have to register this handler and I can do that inside the service manager class. So first, let's register the created login handler as a scoped service. Then, to apply my delegating handler to this client, I will chain the add HTTP message handler method and provide the login handler class for the implementation. Ok, with the delegating handler in place, I can open the iUser API repository interface and add another member. Of course, inside the user API repository class, I have to implement this method and make it async. I can simply paste the implementation here as there is nothing new to be seen. We already saw this implementation in our previous method. But the main difference is that I don't have to manually modify the authorization header here. The handler class will do this for me as soon as I call any method from the typed client. So inside the program application class, I will hide this call and get a single user by calling the get user async method and provide the ID of the user. And also I will print the email of the fetched user. And that's it. I can start the apps now. And as you can see, I have a single user returned from the protected API's endpoint. Great. So you can see how to authorize your HTTP client requests. And now I can finish the video. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.